This is the OTB Network. Hello everyone and welcome to this week's edition of Horses and Courses. I'm Jean Wood. We have got a very busy program for you and we are going to kick things off at Monmouth Park where on Sunday they ran a terrific card of racing highlighted by the Haskell. We are going to begin, however, with a pretty interesting three-year-old event on the turf. The Ocean Place Resort Stakes for three-year-olds going a flat mile on the turf course. Kind of an alternative race for some of the East Coast horses to the Hall of Fame at Saratoga. Let's head to Monmouth and the running of the Ocean Place Resort. They're off. Biloxi Pride started very well. Frisky Spider is showing speed to the outside. And there goes Forest Grove and Partition is taken back fourth just in behind them. Then Skip and Jump followed by Prep School to the outside. Grand Heritage is in behind horses as they make their way toward the clubhouse turn. Then Wasabi Cat to the outside. A gap of another Ford accommodation. And the trailer is Sweet Dream Roadie. Frisky Spider now gets clear from Forest Grove and leads by two. Biloxi Pride, who started well, is now wrangled back on the inside and in tight quarters there, had to check. Now Partition has taken third, not much pace on here at 24 and two quarter. Biloxi Pride back to fourth, had a little bit of trouble early on, then Prep School followed on the far outside by Wasabi Cat. And it's Skip and Jump, a ground saving commendation. Grand Heritage is outside of horses, seven off of Frisky Spider, and then it's Sweet Dream Roadie. 49 flat, the half mile time. Frisky Spider, Eddie King doing a great job controlling his speed. And they're in the clear by a length and a half. Forest Grove wants to run, needs some room. He's gonna swing just to the outside of Frisky Spider. Partition is caught three wide on the turn. Right behind them comes Wasabi Cat in fourth. Wasabi Cat getting a ground saving trip. They're into the stretch. And it's Frisky Spider coming for home in front. Forest Grove on the attack. Wasabi Cat swings to the outside for late speed. Grand Heritage is fourth, but has to get running. Now Forest Grove has headed Frisky Spider, then Wasabi Cat as they come to the wire. Forest Grove and Corey Nakatani have won it. Wasabi Cat was second, and then it looked like Grand Heritage and Frisky Spider. Forest Grove moves on to the turf for Todd Fletcher, shows good speed, winning by a length and a quarter at 13 to 1. Not very often you get 13 to 1 on Todd Fletcher, but this youngster with terrific pedigree to go on to the turf, a half to grade one turf winner to Charmant. Did have to drop down to Claiming Company to break his maiden a few races back, but has been very impressive since. Here wins on the turf impressively over Wasabi Cat with the favored Grand Heritage, allowed to settle rallying late, but falling short to finish third in the field of 10. The winner, Forest Grove, is a chestnut three-year-old son of forestry from Charm a Gendarme by Batonier. Bred in Kentucky by Aaron Yu and Marie Jones. Trained, owned by the breeder, trained by Todd Fletcher, and ridden to victory by Corey Nakatani. Forest Grove goes the flat mile on the firm turf course in 136 and three. We're gonna continue now with the racing action from the Jersey Shore. Next up, the matchmaker for three-year-olds and up fillies and mares on the turf course. Let's head down to New Jersey in the running of the matchmaker. Racing in the matchmaker. Cocktails and dreams went out a bit at the start. It is Mrs. M going to the front. Cocktails and Dreams settles into second. Then Jackie's Promise, followed by Janie into the inside. Gap of two back to alternate. And then it's spin control and a break of another three to where we left off. The two trailers, Constant Touch and Bitter Root River. Mrs. M, the pace setter here, leads by a length and a half and ran a quick opening quarter of 23 seconds flat. Cocktails and Dreams second. Janie in third to the inside as they move to the clubhouse turn. And it's Jackie's Promise. Alternate got a wide trip on the turn. Now four and a half lengths off the lead while three wide on the clubhouse turn. A gap of two to spin control. Then it's where we left off. Constant touch and Bitterroot River is 10 lengths off of front running Mrs. M who heads up the back stretch and has slowed things down considerably. The half was 48 and one fifth seconds. Mrs. M by a tight length now. There goes Cocktails and Dreams edging a bit closer. Alternate third just to the outside. Janian drafting in behind horses, just two off the lead. Then Jackie's Promise, a length and a half back, and then it's spin control where we left off, and constant touch on the far outside. They're tightly packed 
and Bitterroot River trails the field. They went three quarters in one, 12 and two. And it is still Mrs. M, Chuck Lopez aboard in front by two. Janian's got a clear path, still going well in second. Spin control saving ground and coming on. Then cocktails and dreams alternate, constant touch. Where we left off on the inside, Jackie's promise in Bitterroot River, but it's still Mrs. M. She's three in front now. On the far outside, it's spin control. Where we left off is coming with a rush. Here comes where we left off, and she's flying down the stretch to beat Mrs. M on the wire in the matchmaker. Spin control finished third. Where we left off, a filly we've seen a number of times, an allowance company in New York, stepping it up into stakes company down in New Jersey, winning by a length over Miss, Mrs. M, the pace setter, who held on pretty gamely despite uh, getting a little bit weak in the stretch. Spin control rallied well from off the pace to finish third as the favorite Janian, a uh, shipper into town, settled for fourth and uh, just obviously just missing the board, but a uh, nice try after being close up early. The winner where we left off is a chestnut four-year-old daughter of Dr. Devious from Rekindled Affair by Rainbow Quest. Bred in Great Britain by Moigler Stud and owned by the breeder, trained by Chris Clement and ridden to victory by Corey Nakatani. Where we left off covers the mile and an eighth on the firm turf course in 148 and four. We're going to continue now with more stakes racing action from the Jersey Shore in the Ocean Port Handicap, a grade three hundred thousand dollars for older horses at a mile and a sixteenth. Let's head back down to the Mammoth Turf Course for the running of the Ocean Port. Racing in the Ocean Port, Mount Carson at a slow start. It is Max's buddy going right out to lead them early with Royal Affirmed away running in second. Gulch Approval came out third on the inside, then Katir. Burning Roma on the far outside, followed by Stormy Ray, Stormy Roman, and First Lieutenant. And a length and a half farther back to Mount Carson and Del Mar Show, who rate right behind or lead nine lengths off the lead of Max's buddy, who's in front after a quarter of 23 and four fifth seconds. He leads by a length and a half. Gulch Approval is drafting right behind him in second. And then comes Royal Affirm, third on the outside. Now moving into second as Gulch Approval is taken back in hand in third. A gap of two to Burning Roma, who's well held in fourth. Very anxious to run is Burning Roma. He's three and a half lengths off the lead. Then Katir to the inside and first lieutenant. Stormy Roman has seven to make up. Stormy Ray is on the inside unhurried. Then Delmar Show and Mount Carson. It is Max's buddy through a half and 48 and one fifth seconds. The longest shot in the race is setting the pace in the ocean port. He leads by a length to Royal Affirmed, Gulch Approval, third on the inside. And then comes Burning Roma, Katir, waits for running room, fifth along the hedge and five lengths off the lead. Then first Lieutenant Stormy Roman, followed by Stormy Ray, Del Marchaud, and Mount Carson. It is still Max's buddy. He went three quarters in one, 12 and one, turning for home, trying to pull off a huge upset. Gulch Approval is coming through on the inside. Royal Affirmed is coming on now. Burning Roma, Katir is next, and Delmar Show on the far outside with Stormy Roman. Final 16th, Gulch Approval in front. Royal Affirmed, far outside, Stormy Roman coming late. Here's the wire, and it's a three-way photo among Gulch Approval, Katir, and Stormy Roman. Gulch Approval, who uh, last time out picked up stakes credentials in a lesser stake here, moves up on the Jersey Shore to Graded Stakes Company and continues his, uh, his winning ways, this time by a nose in a game three-horse finish. Kathir and Stormy Roman both right there, but it was Gulch Approval getting the victory in a game effort under Pat Day from just off the pace. The winner, Gulch Approval, is a dark bay or brown four-year-old gelded son of Gulch from Classic Approval by With Approval. Bred in Kentucky by Milton Hendry and William S. Farish. Owned by Mary Lou Whitney Stable and trained by Nick Zito. Ridden to victory by Pat Day. Gulch Approval covers the mile in the 16th on the turf in 1 minute 42 and 1. We're going to continue, of course, with the highlight of the card on Sunday. The Haskell from Monmouth Park. Grade 1, mile and an eighth. A million dollars on offer for the three-year-olds. Let's head down to New Jersey in the running of the Haskell. All in line ready for the start they're off in the Haskell and a beautiful break Lionheart right to the front my Snooky's boy came out running in second position and there goes Wimple Stiltskin and Rockhard 10 and they're right after Lionheart 
as they race by the stands for the first time. It's Lionheart and Rock Hard 10's gonna take it to him. He is second early, just to the outside. Wimple Stiltskin went wide. My Snooky's boy and Royal Assault are next, and then Pies Prospect, Tap Day, and Swing for the Fences trails. The opening quarter, very lively. 23 seconds flat, and Lionheart and Joe Bravo get away now. They're in front by two lengths. On the inside, My Snooky's boy. Rock Hard 10 right there to the far outside. Now he's into second. And then it's Wimple Stiltskin. Royal Assault in between horses. Tap Day is on the outside, five off the lead. And then it's Pies Prospect and Swing for the Fences only six behind. A half mile in 46 and four. Lionheart goes by the half mile pole in front by a length and a half. Wimple Stiltskin is now second on the outside. Rock Hard 10 is in between horses. My Snooky's boy is on the rail. Then it's Swing for the Fences. Coming through on the inside, Pies Prospect, Royal Assault, and Tap Day. And Lionheart just keeps rolling right along. He went three quarters in one ten and two. He's in front by two and a half lengths at the quarter pole. My Snooky's boy second. Rock Hard 10 is third, and he's put to pressure. He's got to do better. Here comes Pies Prospect, and he starts to roll. But Rock Hard 10 comes and then at the eighth pole, it's Lionheart in front by two. My Snooky's boy is running another big one on the outside. He's coming to the outside of Lionheart. My Snooky's boy second, running out of time. Here's the wire, and Lionheart has won the Haskell by a length over My Snooky's boy, Pies Prospect, and Royal Assault. It was Lionheart today at a final time of one minute, 48 and four fifth seconds. Lionheart gets the victory, and I suppose with this victory puts himself at the top of the class for three-year-olds in terms of those remaining in training. Lionheart's just uh, obviously rebounding from his uh, little bit of a tough effort last time out. He did win that day, but uh, here gets to the lead, as is his usual running style under Joe Bravo, and held on nicely by a length from my Snooky's boy, who once again finishing second to Lionheart. Pies Prospect rallies from off the pace into the third spot. Disappointing here was the favorite at odds on. Rock Hard 10, just under even money. Corey Nakatani picking up two stakes on the card, but uh, this was the stakes he shipped in to win, and uh, he set a uh, was right off the early pace, which was, uh, was rather brisk, and uh, Rock Hard 10, a little bit of a tough time keeping up late, dropping back and finishing sixth in the field of eight. The winner, Lionheart, a chestnut three-year-old son of Tail of the Cat from Satin Sunrise by Mr. Leader, was bred in Kentucky by the Sabine Stable, owned by Derek Smith and Michael Tabor, trained by Pat B. and Cone, and ridden to victory by Joe Bravo. Lionheart covers the mile and an eighth at Monmouth Park in 148 and four. We're going to continue now with another three-year-old stakes event. We're going to head to Mountaineer Park in the running of the West Virginia Derby. Grade three, a lot of money on the line, nine furlongs the distance. Let's head down to Mountaineer in the running of the West Virginia Derby. The West Virginia Derby. And they're off. And toward the inside, Avid Skier quickly between horses, the gray. That's Brits Jules up to take command and take the rail. It's Brits Jules in front and quickly drawing off by two. Avid Skier is second. Pollard's vision in the checked colors is racing third, and Sir Shackleton is right there alongside in fourth. They round the clubhouse turn. Brits Jules leads it by two. Avid Skier on the outside, second by three parts of a length. Mr. Fattis has moved through on the inside, saving ground at that first turn. Pollard's Vision, fourth on the outside, about three and a half from the front. Then comes Ecclesiastic at the rail, fifth by ahead. Sir Shackleton is sixth on the outside in the black colors. A break of about six lengths back to Fantastic Cat. They move down the back stretch after a half of 47 seconds. And on the front end, it's Brits Jules continuing to show the way by a length and a half, and now drawing off by two and a half. Avid Skier is second, Mr. Fattis racing third. Pollard's vision, not been asked for his run yet. He's fourth on the outside. Ecclesiastic squeezes through between horses. Here comes Sir Shackleton, who's now in gear. Fantastic Cat remains last. They move midway on the turn, and it's Brits Jules with Corey Lannery sailing out there with a quarter of a mile to go, enjoying a three and a half length lead. Avid Skier second, here comes Pollard's vision on the outside as Sir Shackleton Barano takes the inside route. Top of the stretch, 
down the stretch they come, and it's Brits Jewels showing the way by a length and a quarter. Here comes Sir Shackleton on the inside. Bayerano quickly to the front with Sir Shackleton, and Sir Shackleton wins the West Virginia Derby. Pollard's vision up for the play spot, and the front running Brits Jewels held for the show spot. The final time, one minute, 49 seconds. Sir Shackleton. Sir Shackleton getting the victory this time. Mr. Zito getting the, uh, the three-year-old win here, sending Sir Shackleton out of town to pick up the victory by three lengths, taken in hand early, rallying. This is a horse that had shown pretty interesting uh, running style. He was a, a pretty much a forward place type of horse, and here rallied nicely from off the pace. He has obviously shown a little bit of development here, picking up the victory over Pollard's vision who has been a terrific second-tier three-year-old throughout the season. Brits Jules, the early pace setter at 8-1, holds on for third. The winner, Sir Shackleton, a chestnut three-year-old son of Miss Walkie from Nascar's Colors by Star to Nascar, was bred in Kentucky by, T by Tracy Farmer, owned by the breeder and trained by Nick Zito, ridden to victory by Rafael Bejarano. Sir Shackleton covers the mile in an eighth in one minute, 49 seconds flat. We're going to head to Chicago now. We're going to run to Arlington Park for the running of the C.O. Aaron Breeders' Cup Mile. This is a $150,000 flat mile on the turf. Let's head to Arlington and the C.O. Aaron Breeders' Cup Mile. Away and running. Worley breaks well, just gossip showing speed. Here's Mr. Chrisley in the red cap. Holy conflict between horses from those outside gates, Herculated and Guajirs. They make their way into the first turn. It's Worley in front of Mr. Chrisley. Just gossip third, Herculated fourth between horses. Well, here fifth on the outside, then comes Garrache alongside that holy conflict. While they're back in the field, Major Rhythm, who's well off the pace today, while leading false promises at the heels of horses, and in turn is racing 10th and last. The opening quarter, 24 and 2. Good ground this at Arlington Park, and Aaron Greider has Worley running unopposed, and Mr. Chrisley outside of Worley's quarters. Well, here, held right there by Jesse Campbell. To lie a close third, Just Gossip is fourth now, with four furlongs to go in this 18th running. Herculated is only four from leader Worley, followed by Holy Conflict. Major Rhythm running wide on the course. False Promises threading through a lot of traffic now. Garrache hemmed it at the rail, and in turn is at the back of the pack. A half mile went in, 48 and one fifth seconds. Around the far turn, and Worley is moving well in the para green. Worley in front of Mr. Chrisley and Guahir. Major rhythm in the white blinkers coming four wide. Just gossip at the rail. Herculated looking for an alley to run through, and Herculated in tight quarters. Holy conflict is blocked too. They're coming down for the final furlong. It's Worley set down now for the final furlong. Mr. Chrisley, Herculated coming. Just gossip in between horses. False promises also bullying through. Major rhythm on the outside. Outside, they're coming down to the wire. Here's Herculated. False Promises with a late dive. Herculated to win the COR and Breeders' Cup mile from False Promises. It's close for third between Garrache and Major Rhythm. The time here, 136 and 2. Herculated getting a victory in a game effort by a half length. Settling early, splitting horses with a rallying move as the second choice in the wagering over long shot. False Promises with major rhythm also rallying from far back off the pace. A number of horses quite close together in the third, fourth, and fifth spot there, uh, making it a rather exciting stretch call. The winner herculated a bay four-year-old gelded son of Louis Couture's from Terrio's Treasure by Mac Dermida was bred in Kentucky by the Oak Crest Farm. He is owned by the breeder and trained by Michael Stidham. Ridden to victory by Carlos Marquez Jr. Herculated goes the mile on the Arlington Park turf course in 136 and two. We're going to pause now for a brief message. When we return, we'll be heading to Kentucky, Woodbine, and California. Please stay tuned. NYBreads.com, the online home of North America's best incentive program. The latest news, updated throughout the day, plus streaming video of New York Bread Stakes winners. Check out the New York Bread leaderboards for jockeys, trainers, owners, and breeders. Want to become an owner or breeder? Well, the New York Thoroughbred Breeders section tells you about upcoming new owner seminars and farm tours. You'll even find an online sales section with horses you can purchase right now. There's a directory of New York State Farms, a stallion registry, plus up-to-date sales information complete with hip numbers and pedigree pages. Thinking of breeding your mare? 
First, go to nybreads.com and run a hypothetical mating with any registered New York-based stallion. And finally, at nybreads.com, you'll see why the New York Breeding and Racing Program is North America's best, with over $40 million a year in purses, incentives, and awards. So get with the program at nybreads.com. Welcome back, everyone, to Horses and Courses. We're going to continue now with stakes racing action from Kentucky. Ellis Parks featured Gardenia for three-year-olds and up fillies and mares, a grade three. Let's head to Ellis in the running of the Gardenia. Start. Off and running of the Gardenia. Wildwood Royal breaks on top to take the lead. Salzarita right there. Second misfortunate came away third. Angela's Love up the inside racing and fourth and the favorite fair necessities came away four lengths off the pace second last ahead the new dreams who trails rounding the clubhouse turn wildwood royal opens up now by two to salzarita second angela's love cuts the corner racing third misfortunate is four and a half off the pace racing fourth a length and a half in front of bare necessities and new dreams is at the back of the pack now seven links off the pace they string out of it to the opening quarter in 23 and three fifth seconds on to the back side they wheel Wildwood Royal in front by a length and a half. Salzarita now rushing up to put some pressure on. And second, Angela's Love right there under a tug at the rail. Third by two and a half more to Miss Fortune. Fair Necessity splits Phillies now and is just four lengths off the pace. And New Dreams is at the back of the pack, half and 47 and two fifth seconds. Wildwood Royal. Suki gave this one a breather on the backside. Three parts of a length in front. Angela's Love applying some token heat up the inside past the half mile pole. Salzarita. Fair Necessities up into the bit now. Behind that comes Miss Fortune and two back to New Dreams at the back of the pack around the far turn Wildwood Royal lets it out another notch opens up again here comes the favorite Bear Necessities charging hard up the outside to take the second spot then Angela's Love misfortunate next by ahead now Salzarita driving on the far side and five back to New Dreams at the back of the pack to the top lane rail wide open now for Angela's Love set right on through by Gidry Angela's Love up to take the lead and take command of this one turning for home Angela's Love opening up quickly now by three with Fat and earnest on bare necessities far outside wildwood royal misfortunate up the inside but in deep stretch it's all angela's love she's well clear angela's love winning this one angela's love and mark gidry scoring nicely in the gardenia angela's love by four misfortunate second bare necessities third and wildwood royal and the running time of the board 149 and two angela's love getting the victory here this is a filly you may remember from the uh, midwest and mid-atlantic a couple of years ago a nice effort here in stakes company to win by four and three quarter lengths over misfortunate bare necessities shipping in here as the odds on choice but disappointing finishing third in the field of six the winner angela's love is a dark bay or brown four-year-old daughter of not for love from gold Gorian's alden by john alden Bred in Maryland by Dr. George Harmoning, Kimberly Harmoning, and William Campbell. Owned by Bill Post, Bill and Vicki Poston. Trained by Dale Romans and ridden to victory by Mark Gidry. Angela's love goes the mile and an ace at Ellis in 149 and two. We're going to head north of the border now to Canada and the running of the Breeders' Stakes. Four Canadian bred three-year-olds, the final leg of the Canadian Triple Crown. And they change things up a little bit at the end of their Triple Crown. They go a mile and a half. On the turf course, let's head to Woodbine now in the running of the Breeders' Stakes. They're off in the Breeders' Stakes. Strike them hard toward the inside, and on the outside, burst of a fire. A bit of gold is in contention early, along with his uh, smoothness and silver ticket and that red cap on the far outside as they make their way up to the back stretch. That incline up to the back stretch and burst of fire dictates the pace. A bit of gold is second. His smoothness on the outside, third. Then Cavins Elaine. Silver ticket is a right there as well. On the outside is a witness of this. And they sweep up to the back stretch, about to uh, make that hairpin turn into the back stretch. And loose on the lead is burst of fire. Burst of fire leads by five. A bit of gold is second, his smoothness third. A silver ticket is in the fourth position. Strike him hard is to the inside fifth. Then we have a Cavens Elaine. Lone arrows out of trouble, back seven lengths off the lead. Down toward the rail is Hunt the Rainbow. Alongside of that one is a Lord Carmen. Uh, then uh, farther back to a Rainbows uh, for Luck. And witness this as they continue along the backstretch. The opening half mile was in 48 and four, three quarters and 14 flat. 
burst of fire still in front. A bit of gold, his smoothness. Silver ticket in the red cap is out there, three wide. As they head toward the far turn, strike him hard in striking distance. Back five lengths off the lead. Then a Lord Carmen, a Cavens Lane, Lone Arrow on the outside. Then Hunt the Rainbow. Rainbows for luck and a trailing is witness this. Tight group though, just eight and a half lengths separates this field with three eights to go. And it's burst of fire, a bit of gold. Looms the danger, a powerful presence to the flank, a burst of fire. Silver ticket is there. Strike them hard, they hit the quarter pull. Burst of fire, trying to go it all the way on the front end, a bit of gold is set down by Slade Callahan on the outside as they come to the final eighth of a mile and a bit of gold has come away with the lead. First of fire, silver ticket on the outside and they're coming down to the line. A bit of gold and John o. Jones, a bit of gold and John o. Jones to win the Breeders' Stakes. Finishing second was burst of fire and silver ticket was third. Well, a bit of gold had split the, the, uh, the uh, series so far with Negan. Negan decided to head to Saratoga rather than going on to the turf in Canada. Meanwhile, a bit of gold goes on to the turf, shows good speed and wins by a length and three quarter over Burst of Fire with Silver Ticket. Back in the third spot, a very impressive effort, by the way, by Burst of Fire at 18 to one to hold on well to finish second after being involved in the pace every step of the way. The winner, a bit of gold, is a chestnut gelded three-year-old son of gold fever from Anasan by Corporate Report. Bred in Ontario by Becklawatt Stable and owned by the Two-Bit Racing Stable, trained by Catherine Day Phillips and ridden to victory by John O. Jones. A bit of gold goes the mile and a half on the Woodbine Turf Course in 227 flat. We're going to head to California now, Southern California, and racing action from Del Mar, beginning with the Sorrento for two-year-old fillies on Saturday. Grade three hundred and fifty thousand dollars, six and a half furlongs the distance. Let's head to San Diego in the call of the Sorrento. And away they go to a perfect start. On the far side, Inspiring is out very fast. Along the inside, here's Time in Town going up to join her. Alongside of those two is Souvenir Gift in the blue colours. Excuse a bull is right in there as well. And so is Hello Lucky. Five of them, only two lengths separate them. Starlina is a close-up six. Then we come back, another four to Wise Investor. And Crypto's Wild is nine off the leaders. They run to the half-mile pole. And Inspiring is a narrow leader. In the second spot is Souvenir Gift. A close-up third, Hello Lucky, Starlina making her run, has to go a little wide. Excuse a bull as five lengths off these leaders, and then back to time in town. At the back, Crypto's Wild and Wise Investor. Five sixteenths left to go, and Inspiring kicks on for home, expiring the leader a length and a half. Souvenir Gift is in the second spot, Hello Lucky is in third. They're at the top of the lane, and it's still Inspiring, a length and a quarter in front now. Been chased home, Inspiring goes gamely past the eight pole, just in front in second as Souvenir Gift, Inspiring, Souvenir Gift, Hello Lucky coming on third, but Inspiring's hanging on tenaciously, Inspiring gonna outrun Souvenir Gift, and Inspiring takes the Sorrento stake, Souvenir Gift second, Hello Lucky was third, and Crypto's Wild finished fourth. Inspiring getting the victory here, a very nice effort on the front end by two and a half lengths widening over Souvenir Gift with Hello Lucky uh, running third, those two giving pretty much feudal chase, running one, two, three all the way around the racetrack. The winner Inspiring is a chestnut two-year-old daughter of Golden Missile from Arches of Gold by Strike Gold. Bred in Kentucky by Timothy Thornton, Meg Buckley and Mike Buckley. Owned by Mr. and Mrs. Robert Lewis, trained by Bob Baffert. Looks like Bob and Beverly have another very nice youngster here, this one by a freshman stallion who has really gotten off to a very good start. Inspiring ridden to victory by David Flores, covers the six and a half furlongs in 118 and one. One more stakes race to bring to you from Del Mar. That the Clement L. Hirsch for older fillies and mares, a grade two mile and a 16th. Let's head back to Del Mar and Trevor's call of the Clement L. Hirsch. And away they go. Royally chosen, broke very smartly and goes straight to the lead. Star Parade is on the outside. House of Fortune won from the outside. And Allo Love has no alternative but to go four wide. They're sprinting into the first turn. Ms. Lauren is settling down in the fifth position. 
Indy Groove has a good trip down at the rail, four lengths off these leaders. Then there's a big gap of six lengths further back to Victory Encounter. And at the back is tucked away. Fifteen lengths covers them all, three quarters of a mile to go. Royally chosen, still at a strong pace out here and Star Parade's not going to give her a breather either. House of Fortune right there in third and Allo Love on the outside is fourth. Indy Groove is down at the rail. Alongside of that comes Miss Lauren. Only four lengths off these leaders. Still a gap of six back to tucked away in victory encounter. A half mile to go now in the Clementel Hirsch. And it's still royally chosen. Bounding along a length in front. Star Parade's nice and comfortable in second. House of Fortune now entering the fray from the third spot. Allo Love is on the outside. Miss Lauren is in fifth. Five off the leaders. Down at the rail, we have Indy Groove, got to pick it up from there, then tucked away, and victory encounter, they nine off them. Coming to the quarter pole, and Star Parade now comes looking for the lead, immediately tackled by House of Fortune. Star Parade between them, House of Fortune, grandstand side, royally chosen, tries to hang tough at the rail, and Miss Lauren running a huge one in fourth. They come for home, House of Fortune, Star Parade. But here's Miss Lauren now going best of all. And Miss Lauren, a huge upset coming up here. It's Miss Lauren and John Court to take the Clementel Hirsch. House of Fortune second, royally chosen third, and Star Parade finished fourth. Her first victory here in the United States. This was a major winner in her native Argentina, but uh, had not been terribly successful here. Moves back to the main track after a try on the turf and picks up the victory over the three-year-old House of Fortune, who ran a very nice effort here against her elders, royally chosen. The early pace setter held on well to finish third as the favored Star Parade tracks the early lead but could not hold on and finished fourth in the field of eight. The winner, Miss Lauren is a dark bay or brown six-year-old mare, a daughter of numerous from Luminar by Forlatano. She was bred in Argentina by Fair Memento, owned by the Ellers Corporation and trained by Luis Seglin. Ridden to victory by John Court, Miss Lauren covers the mile and a 16th and 142 and four. We're going to pause now for one more brief message and when we return, we'll be taking a look at a week's worth of stakes racing action from Saratoga. Please stay tuned. <music> This year, many thoroughbreds, no longer able to compete, will join the ranks of racing's homeless. Since 1982, the Thoroughbred Retirement Foundation and its supporters have been providing help and hope for those in need. Creating opportunities where once there were none, the TRF, together with the racing industry, is meeting the challenge, taking care of their own. Yesterday's innovative concepts combining the TRF's rescue mission with educational and rehabilitation goals have become today's life-saving success stories and a track record of unsurpassed growth. Safely retired thoroughbreds are now enjoying second careers, bringing responsibility, healing, and purpose to the lives of those who need it most. With your help, we can continue our saving mission ensuring many more horses the welcome home they so richly deserve. Welcome back everyone to Horses and Courses. We're going to continue now with stakes racing action from Saratoga. We're going to go all the way back now to last Monday's running of the Lake George Grade 3 for three-year-old fillies on the grass. Let's head to back to last Monday in the running of the Lake George. And they're off. Art Van beat the gate. Fortunate Damsel comes through on the inside. Art Fan, Fortunate Damsel down on the inside. La Reina moves through in between horses. And Savage Beauty is well held back running in fourth position. Fortunate Damsel on the inside as the field moves into the first turn. It's La Reina and Art Fan head to head for the early lead. Fortunate Damsel third toward the inside. On the outside, Delta Sensation ranging up to be fourth. Followed by Venturi, who's fifth on the inside. Savage Beauty is sixth behind a slow pace early on here. And then it's Lucifer's Stone, who's followed at the back of the pack in the early stages by Seducer's Song, Galloping Gal, and Really American. Moving up the back stretch, and they waltz through the opening quarter in 25 flat. Lorena is the leader down the back stretch. Art Fan runs along in second. Fortunate Damsel is now third as the tempo begins to quicken. On the inside, Venturi runs along in fourth. Savage Beauty. Fifth and in between horses. Delta Sensation sixth on the outside with a half mile to go now. And then it's Seducer's Song, followed by Lucifer Stone, who's still about six or seven from the front. Really American galloping gal at the back. The half and 49 seconds flat. They round the far turn. Art Fan is the leader. 
Arch Fan in front, by a neck, La Reina battles on second, Fortunate Damsel runs in third, here's Seducer's Song, rallying on the outside fourth, Venturius fifth, Delta Sensation and Lucifer Stone, and the field turns for home, and it's Art Fan the leader at the top of the stretch, La Reina battles on, Fortunate Damsel's in behind those two, Seducer's Song driving toward the lead on the outside, and Seducer's Song grabs the lead. Seducer's Song in front, Art Fan grudgingly gives way second, Fortunate Damsel and Venturi coming on the outside, and they're coming down to the line, and it's Seducer's Song to win. Seducer's Song wins by two lengths, photo for second, Venturi, and Fortunate Damsel. Seducer's Song, who is a little bit of a later developing three-year-old filly in the Chris Clement barn, really developing into a nice horse through her allowance conditions and drawing clear by a length and a half over the favored lukewarm three-to-one choice Venturi in the United States, of course, for the powerful Franco barn. Fortunate Damsel sat just a perfect trip right up off, just off the pace at 13-to-1 and held on quite well to finish third. The winner, Seducer's Song, is a gray or roan three-year-old daughter of unbridled song from Seducer by Housebuster. She was bred in Kentucky by Peter Karchis, owned by her breeder and trained by Chris Clement, ridden to victory by Jerry Bailey. Seducer's Song covers the mile and the 16th on the turf course in 142 flat. We're going to head back to Saratoga now for a uh, pair of stakes races from the New York Stallion Series. We're going to go back to last Wednesday first and the running of the Cab Calloway division for New York sired three-year-olds. Let's head up to Saratoga and the call of the Cab Calloway. And they're off. Ron Greshner pinched back soon after the break. West Virginia gets off to a good beginning. Icicle Charlie is also right there and Chowder's first on the outside. Those three into the first turn together. Icicle Charlie down on the rail, short lead. West Virginia alongside second. And Chowder's first is backed off a bit to run in third. Scooty is fourth toward the inside. Absolutely Joe, fifth and well in hand. And then on the outside, Heathrow running three wide in six, followed by Pay Attention, and Ron Greshner trails the field as they make their way into the backstretch run. Reasonable first quarter of 23 and four fifth seconds. High school Charlie in West Virginia is glued to him. Second on the outside by three and a half lengths. And then Chowder's first, who's on hold while running along in third. Absolutely Joe, followed by Heathrow. Ron Greshner on the outside, and stablemate Scooty, and Pay Attention near the back of the pack after a half mile of 48 and two-fifths second. The pace not particularly fast here with High School Charlie in West Virginia running one-two at the half mile pole. Two and a half lengths back, Chowder's first third on the outside. Absolutely Joe is called on for his run. He's now fourth toward the rail. Then Ron Greshner followed by Heathrow and mate Scooty and pay attention at the back of the pack and they're rounding the far turn. Here comes West Virginia now to get on even terms with Icicle Charlie. Chowder's first. Chowder's first joins the fray on the outside third. Absolutely, Joe is fourth. And pay attention now, mounting a bit on the outside fifth as the field turns for home. And West Virginia is tested here by Chowder's first as they come down to that final furlong. The whip is out on West Virginia. West Virginia holding on, but a determined rival in Chowder's first. West Virginia by a neck. Chowder's first. West Virginia by a head. Chowder's first. Nothing between them. Here's the wire, and the photo goes to Chowder's first. Beating West Virginia by a narrow margin, a long way back to a photo for third between Pay Attention and Absolutely Joe. Chowder's first getting there in the shadow of the wire uh, as it looked like West Virginia might be home free, but he was starting to get a little bit leg weary in the six and a half to one. Third choice in the wagering, getting the job done by a neck in a nice effort. This guy had had some problems, had had some uh, surgery on his throat, but returned very, very strongly here. In a moment, when you read his pedigree, you'll understand why he relished the two turns. Chowder's first is a gray or roan three-year-old son of Let Good Times Roll, a stallion you might not know that well. He is uh, well-bred to go long, however, out of Stay Loose by Unbridled. He was bred here in New York by Wonderland Breeding, owned by Ennis Cairo Stable, trained by Phil Serpe, and ridden to victory by Edgar Prado. Chowder's first covers the mile and an eighth in 150 and four. We're going to continue with stakes racing action in the Statue of Liberty division of the New York Stallion Series. This time it's three-year-old Philly is going to go the nine furlongs, all offspring of New York Stallions. Let's head back to Saratoga for the Philly division, the Statue of Liberty division of the New York Sire Stakes. The gate. And they're off. 
So sweet a cat breaks well at the rail south wing. Cats roar right alongside her as they race into the clubhouse turn. Dinner date with the early leaders, but spun wide going into the turn. Very wide, Judy Soda. Around the first turn, and south wing comes away with the lead to lead by two lengths. Dinner date now with a rush up in a second. Cats roar third. Raff Society Girl, a ground saving fourth. And then it's so sweet a cat who's on hold while running fifth and on the outside. Will flirt is six by three. And Priscilla's flag is now running in seventh. Weezer is eighth. Expect nothing is ninth. And Judy Soda has found her way to the inside now. And she's running tenth. Then there's a break of three to Sharp Burnett. And Winlock's Majesty trails the field. South Wing continues to lead them. Uncontested quarter, 23 and two-fifth seconds. South Wing the leader by a length after a half in 47 and three-fifth seconds. Raft Society Girl. Cats roar and dinner date in a line. They're second, third, and fourth. So sweet a cat. Moving comfortably while fifth on the outside. So sweet a cat now being asked for a bit more as they round the far turn. And then it's Will Flirt, Priscilla's flag, and Judy Soda. Expect nothing, Sharp Burnett, Weezer, and Winlock's Majesty. And there's less than three furlongs to go. Three quarters and 13 and two. It's been south wing the whole way. But here comes so sweet a cat who cruises up to her second with a quarter mile to go. And farther back, it's Priscilla's flag on the outside. Cats roar, Judy Soda comes wide off the turn. And they're at the top of the stretch. And Jorge Chavez gets to work on South Wing. She's digging down. And So Sweet a Cat on the outside now takes the lead and opens up. So Sweet a Cat leaving South Wing and the rest in her wake. She'll be a much the best winner. So Sweet a Cat and Johnny Velasquez romp by six. South Wing second by another eight links or so. And then Cats Roar and Priscilla's flag. So sweet a cat on the stretch out. This is a filly that had been running well going short, but again, we've got a lot of pedigree to stretch out here, and this one lives up to expectations, romping by eight over South Wing with Cat's Roar back in the third spot. The winner, so sweet a cat, winning off easily a daughter of three-year-old daughter of tomorrow's cat from Sly Damsel by Damascus was bred in New York by Jane M. Freed. She is owned by the breeder and trained by Ralph D'Alessandro and ridden to victory by Johnny Velasquez. So sweet a cat covers the mile and an eighth in the Statue of Liberty division of the New York Stallion Series in 151 and three. We're going to head back into graded stakes company now for Friday's running of the Honorable Miss for three-year-olds and up fillies and mares going six furlongs for grade three credentials. This race, of course, a prep for the grade one ballerina later on in the meet. Let's head back to Saratoga, the running of the Honorable Miss. And the rough Cologne hustled right out of there quickly. Cologne's in front. Ebony Breeze away second on the inside. Summer Miss is taken back. And save the time is away running in fourth. Smoke and Follick is fifth. Belong to C. Sixth on the outside. And then it's Yell running seventh. And my trusty cat is the last of them all. Cologne. A narrow lead on the outside. Summer Miss now trying to get past her as they run the opening quarter in 22 and 3. Save of the time. Up and on the pace and running third. Belong to C. Revving up fourth on the outside. Ebony Breeze is fifth and down toward the inside. And then it's Smoke and Frolic and a break of three back to my trusty cat and yell. And they're coming to the top of the stretch. It's still Cologne barreling along with the lead. Belong to C. Takes a run at her as the field turns for home. Save of the time is right there between horses. Ebony Breeze is coming up the inside. Summer Miss is battling on. My trusty cat now beginning to hit her best ride, but she'll need some running room. They're in the final furlong now, and here comes Ebony Breeze to take the lead. Ebony Breeze in front, but my trusty cat is running on late. They're running out of time with Ebony Breeze in front. My trusty cat, here's the wire. Photo finish. Ebony Breeze and the hard charging my trusty cat. Close for third as well. My trusty cat and Pat Day, yet another upset, 14 to one on this one, getting a nose victory. Again, in the shadow of the wire over Ebony Breeze, who was uh, fairly popular in here, the second choice in the wagering, Smoke and Frolic rallying, rallying well from off the pace to finish in the third spot. My trusty cat shipping in from out of town. She'd been running in the Midwest and had uh, kind of tailed off from some of her best form, but did take advantage of a sharp pace in this field, my trusty cat is a bay four-year-old daughter of Tail of the Cat from Entrusted by Private Account. Bred in Kentucky by Vintage Racing and owned by Carl F. Pollard. 
trained by David Vance and ridden to victory by Pat Day. My trusty cat covers the six furlongs at Saratoga in 110 and 1. We've got more sprinters coming up next with Saturday's running of the Amsterdam for three-year-old sprinters. This is a grade two, $150,000 six furlongs. Once again, a prep race for the stretch out seven furlongs uh, later on in the meet in the King's Bishop. Let's head back to Saratoga, the running of the Amsterdam. And they're off. Classy Migration and Smoke Home break alertly. There goes Wajilia and quick action. Scramble for the lead on the back stretch here. Classy Migration up to take the lead, but quick action is right there with them on the outside. Mass Media moves to third. Pomeroy on the outside. Now up to be fourth. Wajilia back to fifth. A break of four back to Smoke Home. And the trailers, Buona Charlie. Racing past the half-mile pole, quick action and classy migration through a quarter in 21 and 4. Barreling full throttle around the far turn. Quick action's got the lead. Quick action in front by a head. Classy migration, Pomeroy right there. Wajilia just in behind the lead, right up there running along in fourth. Then farther back, Mass Media had to take up there in fifth. Smoke home with the big move on the outside. And now the field turns for home. Quick action, short lead. Classy Migration has given way. Here comes Pomeroy, who strikes the lead. Smoke Coombe and Buwana Charlie. Last on the backstretch, it's Pomeroy and Buwana Charlie. Pomeroy holding on narrow lead. Buwana Charlie has the momentum. Buwana Charlie has the lead. On the wire, Buwana Charlie last to first to beat Pomeroy by three quarters of a length while Jillian was third. Buana Charlie, again, taking advantage of what looked to be a hot pace, and it's set up nicely in front of him, trailing the field into the far turn, but Shane Sellers got him kicked into high gear to pick up a three-quarter length victory over Pomeroy, with Wajilia rallying as well to finish in the third spot uh, off of a very impressive victory down in Florida last time out. The winner, Buana Charlie, is a three-year-old bay son of Indian Charlie from Shahalo by Halo. He was bred in Kentucky by the E&D Enterprises owned by Highly Broad Racing Stable and trained by Steve Asmussen, ridden to victory by Shane Sellers. Buona Charlie goes to six furlongs at Saratoga in 109 and two. From the uh, three-year-old sprinters to the older horse division, next up, the Whitney Handicap on Saturday, $750,000 grade one, uh, perhaps one of the deepest runnings of the Whitney Handicap in recent memory. Let's head back to Saratoga and the running of the grade one Whitney. they're off. Yes, sir. General, sir, trying to get to that lead. Peace Rules was off to a clean beginning and down toward the inside. It's Roses and May racing for the first turn. Yes, sir. General, sir, out for the lead, but there's Roses and May down to his inside. Peace Rules sitting just off them third in the early stages here. Seattle Fitz is fourth and moving from the outside. Guide Your Star running in fifth. Sarava six toward the inside. And then it's Newfoundland seventh on the far outside at the back of the pack our perfect trip and Bowman's Band. 22 and three for the opening quarter mile. Absolutely punishing for yes sir, general sir. Roses and May is right up on that pace and so too is Peace Rules and it is a blistering pace. Seattle Fitz is fourth. The opening half mile in 45 and one fifth seconds. A wild pace here. Yes, sir. General Sir is the leader. Roses and May second. Peace rules on the outside third. Seattle Fitz is fourth on the outside. From the back of the pack, Bowman's man. Perfect drift and Pat Day beginning to move as they round the far turn. Guide your star under a ride down toward the inside. Newfoundland and Sarava. Three furlongs from the line. Three quarters and one. Oh, eight and four. And yes, sir. General Sir is opening up. He's opening up. He's got a three length lead at the quarter pole. Roses and May, second on the outside. Peace Rules has dropped back. Perfect Drift on the far outside is coming on now. And Bowman's Band is there too. Into the final furlong. Nothing left for Yes Sir, General Sir. Here's Roses and May. Here's Perfect Drift. Perfect Drift and Roses and May. Roses and May unwavering determination. Perfect Drift is surging. Short lead. Roses and May dead game. Here's the wire. Roses and May in a spectacularly game performance to win by a nose over perfect drift. It was close for third between Bowman's Band and Sarava. Roses and May, a very interesting horse. This horse, as you can tell by his name, obviously, the Ramseys had very high hopes for this guy early in his career. 
He had a couple of setbacks, but came back to the races this year at four with a terrific season. He's four for four. He did come into this race with a win over the track. He won at Saratoga and Allowance Company last summer. And here, dead game, sitting just off an extremely fast pace, 22.64, 45.25. 108.92 in a mile and an eighth two-turn race. He was close to the pace, sitting uh, just off. Yes, sir, general, sir, as that one opened up a couple of lengths, but uh, never uh, never gave in. His perfect drift and Pat Day came to him, repeating the one-two finish from the Cornhusker last week, or last month, rather, out in Iowa. Bowman's band rallied from uh, far, far back off the pace to finish third, just a nose in front of Sarava who finished fourth. Peace rules very disappointing after pressing the early pace as the lukewarm three to one favorite, finishing sixth in the field of nine. The winner, Roses in May, a dark bay, four-year-old colt, a son of Devil His Due from Tell a Secret by Speak John. Bred in Kentucky by the Margot Farm Limited, owned by Mr. and Mrs. Kenneth Ramsey, trained by Dale Romans and ridden to victory by Mr. Craig One himself, Edgar Prado. Roses in May covers the mile and an eighth in the Whitney at Saratoga in 148 and two. One more stake to bring to you from Saratoga, that of course, the Jim Dandy on Sunday. It was a, this of course a grade two prep for the Travers later on in the meet. Let's head back to Saratoga, the running of the Jim Dandy. And they're off. Courageous Act breaks first. Medalist Theron is inside. Purge on the outside. They race into the first turn, and it's Medalist to be the early leader. But Purge isn't far behind. Second, just outside of Courageous Act. Then it's Nijon. Then farther back of the field, Eddington and the Cliff's Edge is the early trader. The Cliff's Edge is already at least 10 lengths from the speedy Medalist. Medalist takes the field into the back stretch. He's very eager. Ran a quarter and 23 seconds flat. Purge is two and a half lengths behind him in second. Courageous Act is third. A break of four through the Canadian called Dijon. And a break of five back to the long striding Eddington. And a big break of six lengths back to the cliff's edge. And he is better than a dozen from the leader. And the leader is Medalist and his half was 45 and three fifths seconds. Medalist. Medalist, the leader by four at the half mile pole. He's running at a very swift pace here with Purge running along in second. And then Courageous Act is under a ride but losing ground. Nijon, Eddington, and another five lengths back to the cliff's edge. A 15 length deficit and only three furlongs to make it up. Here comes Purge. Here comes Purge and he rolls up to take the lead. It is Purge in front. Medalist had nothing left to respond to him. In the meantime, the Cliff's Edge made a big move on the turn, but he steadied in behind horses. At the top of the stretch, Purge opens up a three-length lead. On the far outside, the Cliff's Edge is moving into second. Then in between horses, Eddington fights on. Medalist has given way, he's fourth. Less than a furlong to go, and Purge opens up, opens up by five. The Cliff's Edge and Eddington chasing him home, but Purge, Purge wins the Jim Dandy by five lengths. The Cliff's Edge coming from out of it to be second. Eddington was third. Purge getting the victory here, showing a dimension of, uh, of relaxing here. He allowed Medalist to go to the early lead and uh, was able to sit pretty much chilly right behind the, uh, the pace of Medalist, uh, who was a little bit aggressive early off that very impressive win in the Dwyer. He did take a fair amount of money as the second choice was not able to continue on with it and was a, uh, as a finishing fifth in the field of six, a rather, uh, a rather poor performance off of such an impressive effort last time out. Meanwhile, Purge romps to a four and a half length win. The Cliff's Edge rallies beautifully from off the pace as is his usual running style. He does seem to be rounding back into form. We saw him follow that pattern into the Kentucky Derby earlier on this year. So he does still look like an improving horse heading into the Travers, which I presume will be his next spot. Eddington did cross the line third, but he was disqualified after bearing into Negan at the top of the stretch. So we do have Negan, who was impressive up north of the border in Canada earlier this year, finishing officially third in the year, this year's running of the Jim Dandy. The winner, Purge, is a bay three-year-old son of pulpit from Copeland's Bid Gal by Copeland, bred in Kentucky by Glory Days Breeding and owned by Starlight Racing, trained by Todd Fletcher, 
again, Perch did break his maiden up here at Saratoga last year, not unlike Birdstone, who he may end up, as well as the Cliff's Edge, who may, they may all end up meeting in a couple of weeks in the Travers. Certainly would be a very exciting running of the Travers if they all do, in fact, get here for that event. Purge covers the mile and an eighth under John Velasquez in 147 and two. That's going to wrap up a busy edition of Horses and Courses. Thank you very much for joining me this week. We hope you'll be able to join us again next time for more exciting stakes racing action from here in New York at Saratoga and all around the country. I'm Jean Wood. I'll see you back here next week.